in the previous episode. We traveled the long road from Nelspreit to the Khalakhari Transfrontier Park. We punished ourselves by staying in a lot of chalets. We got some proper Kalahari red dust on the cruiser and the companion. And we saw a scaredy cat running away from a screaming jackal. This is our epic overlanding adventure in the Khalakhari. In this episode, we visit the Achterlöni Museum. We look at some big birds dusting themselves. I get caught in a Kalahari sandstorm. And we find some cats slapping each other silly. We got up early to take advantage of the soft light of a cold winter's morning. The South African side of the Khalakhari runs mainly along two dried up riverbeds, namely the Nosop and the Oyop riverbed. So on your game drives you can either take the route along the Oyop riverbed, or the route along the Nosop riverbed. This specific morning we took the route along the Oyop. And it definitely was the right choice. We found this very playful young leopards on what used to be red dunes, but now it is overgrown with grass. It was a fantastic sighting, a bit difficult to see the well camouflaged leopards at times, but definitely still an amazing sighting to witness. Leopard sightings is always fantastic. They kept on chasing and tackling each other for hours on end.
We left them playing to quickly go and stretch the legs at the Achterlöhne picnic site. At the Achterlöhne picnic site you can find the Achterlöhne museum. It is an old stone walled and grass thatched house that was built during the First World War to watch over a borehole that was drilled for troops advancing into the now Namibia as it was near the border. After the war it was used as a farmhouse but only a few families were prepared to settle on these harsh environment farms. In 1931, the Minister of Lands proclaimed the area a national park. And today it is known as the Achterlöhne Museum, still displaying some of the original furniture used in those days. There are so many stories about the real history of the Achterlöhne area. This is just a short version of how we understand it. Near the house are the remains of a blacksmith workplace with some tools on display that were used during those times. There is also some remains of an outside cooking area. The entire site or the area gives a perfect view over the Oyop River and the nearby Achterlöhne Waterhole. From here you can very clearly see why leopards, lions and other predators return to the higher dune areas. You have a clear view for miles on end. It also displays the well that was dug by hand. Be very careful though as in the dry season bees are very active in this area. Lastly you can see the remains of the area of a soak tub where animal hides were processed. We quickly prepared our breakfast to go and return to the leopard close by. To our surprise they were still there, just as playful as before. Apparently we just missed them catching a squirrel. Though not a lot, but they did give us some photo opportunities, posing on the red sand. When fully grown this is surely going to be a big and stunning leopard. They had us speechless for most of the morning. We just soaked up this spectacular sighting. It is always difficult to leave a sighting when you can still see the animals, but we made the call to drive further north along the riverbed and came across this squirrel that was trying every possible way to open a tsama.
Sama melons are devoured by almost all the animals in the vast areas of the Kalahari. They provide a good source of water and vitamins in the dry months of the year. This guy knew what was inside, but just could not get to it. If he only knew how many laughs he gave us that day. The Oyop River Road has the most stunning bird life, especially raptors. Lots and lots of raptors. For nearly two hours, every second sighting we had was a raptor feeding on something. We really enjoy raptor sightings and we can spend hours with them as they always provide some sort of entertainment. Sometimes even better than to sit and look at sleeping lions. And if you stick around long enough, most of the time they take their leftover food to their youngsters. It was amazing to see how and what these raptors feed on. We turned around and returned on the same road, and finally, I don't know how, but they managed to open that Samo.
there is a dune road linking the two dried up riverbed roads. We took this road as we wanted to have our lunch at the Melkflay picnic site. This picnic site is famous for having plenty of leopard visitors in the past. So, as with any wildlife area, always be on alert when getting out of your vehicle. We had our lunch here and took a quiet drive back to Tweerefieren, passing the most photographed tree in the park. I'm taking a walk here to the height at Tweerefieren. The pathway to the height here that we are referring is just in front of chalet number one and two. It is quite a sandy road and we have seen snakes there before so always remember to wear your shoes. The water hole at the Heide Tweerefieren is not as busy and does not get as many visitors as say the Heide at Norsop. But if you don't feel like driving the entire day, it still is a fantastic place to be close to nature. The corrugations definitely takes a toll on your vehicle, as somehow it rattled so bad that a bolt keeping the canopy attached to the cruiser completely broke off. And believe me when I say, it is not fun doing repairs on a windy Kalahari day. So to get away from the wind, instead of sitting in the chalet, we took a chilled afternoon drive.
We were very excited the next morning and we got up very early as we were heading up north into the park. So we're on our way to Nosop. It's been a very very cold morning and the sightings has not been what we wanted it to be. But anyway, we are uh, we are here at Naukfle. I'm making a quick stop for breakfast and then we're off again to Nosop. Most of the picnic sites has similar very clean ablution facilities, just like this one at the Skulk. So we have finally made it to Nosop Camp. Been a very long drive, but we are here. There is a general misperception about the shop at Nosop, as it is actually very well stocked. At last, it was time to do some proper camping.
It is definitely true that sleeping in your own bed with your own bedding is much more enjoyable than sleeping in a chalet. So we just finished setting up camp. Now it is time to go for our first afternoon drive here at Nosop. Let's aim high and hope for lions and leopards, eh? And aiming high surely paid off. In the next episode, we find some furry young lion cubs. We look at a honey badger on top of the world. A leopard tries her best to hide from us and we make a noise as the sun is rising. <laughs>